then we'll enter heaven's portals, sweeping through the pearly gates. Amen. Amen. It is once more and again that the Almighty God of heaven has indeed blessed us, yes. allowing us to come <laughs> back into his house that we might worship and praise his holy and his divine name. Amen. It certainly is good to see each of you here who have come to be with us this afternoon in our afternoon worship service. We're glad to have you here. Amen. And we are hoping and praying that as we study the word of God together, we might gather something that will help us be more of what he will have us to be Amen. and less of what we ought not to be. Tonight we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 12. Please stand with me for the reading of the word of Almighty God. 1 Kings chapter 12, beginning at verse number 6, and we will end at verse number 8. I'm going to read verses 6 and 7 solo, and then I ask you to join in with me with the reading of verse number 8. 1 Kings chapter 12. Beginning at verse <clears throat> number 6. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou would be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Verse 8 with me, please. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing unto those who are the readers and certainly unto those who are the doers of his holy and his divine will. This afternoon we want to talk to you from the subject, young man, listen to the old me. Young man, listen to the old me. After the death of Solomon, his son Rehoboam found himself in a very peculiar situation without any written instruction from his father. Rehoboam as successor of his father King Solomon is faced with having to make a decision for the better welfare of the kingdom of Israel. The congregation has approached him in verse number four and have informed him that his father had laid heavy burdens on them and made their service unto him grievous. They desired that Rehoboam would lighten their burdens, ease up off of them, if you will, and return, and in return they would serve him faithfully. Well, not being filled with the wisdom of his father Solomon, Rehoboam asked them to give him three days to make a decision, verse number five. And beginning in verse number six, the Bible informs us that Rehoboam began to ask for some advice on how to handle this situation from the old men. The Bible says, and Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived. And he said, how do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, if thou would be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve him, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. First of all, my brothers and my sisters, we see that Rehoboam asked the right men the right question. Yes, These old men had served with his father Solomon. 
They had seen some things that he had not seen. Yeah. They knew about things that he was not yet aware. And if anybody could advise him correctly, they could. Right. So he asked the right men the right question. But he did the wrong thing in that he did not listen to what they had to say. Right. Verse number 8 painfully informs us of the fact that he forsook the counsel of the old men yep. which they had given him. And he consulted with the young men that had grown up with him and stood before him. Rehoboam here makes the foolish mistake of turning away from some good advice to some advice that's going to cause him to lose his position as king over the United Kingdom of Israel. Amen. He listened to the young men rather than the old men. But the exhortation this afternoon is young men listen to the old men. There are reasons why that we are encouraging the young men to sit at the feet of the old men. Right. There are some things that the young man needs to know tonight that would be of the utmost value and importance to him if he would just listen to what the old man has to say. First of all, the reason why the young man needs to listen to the old men is because he's been where you're trying to go. We saw in the account of these old men who served with Solomon, they had been around the people longer and they knew what was best for the kingdom of Israel. They had already seen what he had yet to see. They already knew what he had yet to find out. They had already been where he was trying to go and the best thing that he could have done for himself was to listen to what they had to say. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 8. As the old man Solomon informs the young men of the self-same thing. Proverbs chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 8. The Bible informs us here. Solomon says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. They shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. And chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say unto you, come with us and let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privately for the innocent without cause. Solomon is warning the young man to listen to the old men. Right. Let the law of your mother and father be your law. Let their guidance be your guidance in life. Listen to what they have to say because they've been where you're trying to go. Not only does the young man need to listen to the old men because he's been where you're trying to go, but another reason why, young man, you need to listen to the old man is because he knows more than you will ever know. While it is true, that modern technology has advanced to the far beyond years that have passed us. There are some things that a technological education can teach you. Right. There are some things you can't learn from a computer. And common sense is one of them. Come on in the room tonight. Common sense is merely defined as the knowledge and the ability to do what's best in any given situation. Did you hear me tonight? That's what common sense is composed of. It's that there are a lot of young men that have a lot of book sense, yeah. but they don't have any common sense. Right. And if you're going to make it in this life, you've got to have some common sense. You've got to know how to make the best decision in any given situation. Right. Notice here in Proverbs chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 10. Notice the wise man Solomon teach us something about common sense. Now Solomon says, when wisdom entereth into thine heart, 
and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul.